I have a lot of videos on YouTube, and uh, some of you have maybe watched me paint. I use a lot of uh, scrubbing. I, I like to achieve my value differences by optical grays. On top of this, I used a mixture of uh, egg glare mixed with dry powder. Two dry powders, I used black and umber. And I made a liquid mixture, which uh, the glare is the egg white that's been uh, beaten to a froth, allowed to distill, and then you mix it together. I call that a glare paint medium. G, P, M, a glare paint medium. And it dries very fast. I just painted this. And already I'm, I'm able to, I mean minutes ago. The next step I'm going to take will be to uh, apply oil. You cannot apply an emulsion. You can't use any of the emulsions I've developed. You have to use pure oil and I'll demonstrate that when I do it. So I'm using the superior oil of the old masters, which you can learn how to do, how to make your own. You can see my books on Amazon. I've soaked a little bit of uh, cheesecloth into the oil, and now I'm just going to oil out the entire surface of the painting. You cannot use an emulsion. It will lift up this uh, glare paint medium we just applied. So you must be very careful. remove all the excess. Right now I'm just applying the oil, get it all over the surface. Then I will come in with a clean piece of cheesecloth and I'm going to remove as much of the oil as I can. That's where you get the word oil out. Oil goes in, now I've got the dry cheesecloth and I'm going to remove that. Oil goes in and the oil goes out, oil out. So I'm going to paint uh, these two portraits, a la prima. I've already done the under drawing, under painting and I'm going to use the new alternate method of using calcite sun oil, CSO. And the first step is to mix the CSO. You got to make the CSO by mixing 
three parts of calcium carbonate powder and one part of the superior oil. So I made the, uh, the CSO, there it is. In the standard CSO, I would mix this with the two paints, 50-50, to create calcite sun oil paint. Um, now, I'm going to create this by adding a couple of drops of this. The glare paint medium and I will show you how to do this that's too much I have to take some of that away now I'm going to mix this with this and now with this I'm going to create calcite glare medium paint medium. That might be a little too much, but I'll go with what I got. the rest of this. So now it's like four drops. And the glare paint medium is nothing more than egg white glare that's been frothed and added dry powder to it by using the number and the black. And there is the want to call the CSO glare paint medium. Now that is what I'm going to mix with my tube colors to create calcite sun oil paint with the alternate mixture of CSO. Some brands have a lot of oil, some of the tube paints, others are more dry. I don't stick with any brand, I just use whatever I can get. I don't think it's that important to me. I just want to just get the work done. But I buy quality paints from the standard ones you find in the art stores. So I've already got here set up uh, enough of the CSO GPM, which is calcite sun oil mixed with glare medium. And now we're going to go ahead and put it all together. So I set the palette. I mixed uh, the CGM, the calcite sun oil mixed with GPM, which is the glare paint medium. And uh, Every color needs a little bit more than another one. Uh, and as I said, some paint manufacturers really put an excess of oil with their two paints. So it isn't about having anything written down hard and fast. You pretty much have to experiment with what you've got. All right. The palette is set up. I've got my primaries black and brown. And here I've got uh, 
several warm colors that I've mixed for this for the skin and over here several cool colors values you can call them values uh, these basically contain some blue and these basically have no blue so I'm not a stickler for mixing five nine nine 15 or 20 values in order to make a picture, but I do find it helpful to, to, to mix a few values that I can see in front of me so I can make choices. But then all of these can be altered by adding a little bit more white or a little bit more blue or a little bit more red. I'm going to make a mixture here. I'm going to get some of the CGM, which is a mixture of the uh, glare paint medium and the original CSO. And I'm going to get this and I'm going to make a new oil out medium. I put it there in this dish. I'm going to now I'm going to add some oil. What you're going to have here is something very similar to aguado. Now, those of you know that that have read my books, you know that aguado is not an emulsion. Is not an emulsion. Aguado is a simple mixture of very simple mixture of calcium carbonate powder and and oil okay so you see that uh, now I've got the mixture pretty well made and then I'm going to show you something that I just uh, discovered all right, let me get ready. So I'm going to demonstrate soaking a little bit of, of that mixture with, the cheese, with this cheesecloth and I'm gonna rub it all over. This is really a brand new oil out. Now, let me get some more of that. What I found is that the new alternate CSO mixture dries overnight and uh, and so what we need is is an oil out in order for the paint to be fluid and to be applied well. And the egg content in this mixture makes sure that there's no run, no run or spread of the oil paint. In my last uh, comment about this, the use of halos and rainbows, I've made comment that I had an out-of-body experience. That happened to me in the year 2006. And
So I'm going to continue to paint. I'm not going to finish the face either on this portrait or on this portrait until I um, finish the entire painting. Then I'll possibly make a uh, part two to this video. Thank you very much. So this is all I'm going to do now for this particular video. Uh, I love the Impressionist movement where they just paint freely with loaded brush strokes like Van Gogh and Renoir and even the post-impressionists post like uh, Cezanne or all those. They, a lot of freedom and beauty is made when you don't even think, you just paint. And that's what this is, uh, just painting with a freedom and uh, I'm enjoying the application of colors just like when you were a kid. Now, of course, uh, this freedom, and Van Gogh used to do the same, he would paint spirited an entire day, paint a picture, but then he would come back later and he would overpaint and he would do some corrections, which is what I'm going to do. And then finally, uh, now I've already said that this, these are not real people. I've, I've cut eyes from one photograph, a mouth from another, and hair from another, and I've created this person. And the same here. I'm just using long hair that I find that I appreciate, and then I pick out a nose and some eyes, and I patient them together. I make a, I make a, a, a collage. Then I go and make prints of that in different sizes. And then I place the different size prints that are black and white. I paint, I place them on the board to see which one fits best. So uh, don't be fooled. All those great masters from the 17th century, like Franz Hals, they did not have these people sit there for hours as they painted them. Not, it didn't happen, no. They had what's called a, uh, a very crude projection device. It's a Comet Obscura. They would build a huge room that they could stand up in and then it would be totally dark and then they would uh, put a lens in one wall and the image would be projected straight into the dark room against the back wall but the image was reversed and upside down and they solved the problem by putting a plain flat mirror at, 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 right above the lens that's in the wall and then with that it would project the image into the mirror and then downwards onto a table where Franz Hals and all these portrait artists would then trace. Now if you can get the eyes, the nose and the mouth, the chin line, that's all you need to do. It'll look just like the person. And then you can do what you want. You can put blonde hair, black hair, red hair, and anything else you want, long hair, short hair, etc. And uh, you can use this method, the Comet of Scuda method. But today we have photographs and we have projection electricity. They didn't have that, yet they were able to create wonderful, realistic, hyper, hyper, super realistic. Just look at all those Dutch paintings from the 17th century that are uh, of still lifes and fruits and all the vegetables. And you can't believe the, the complete, complete uh, photo hypersensitive realism, but that's how they did it. All right, I want to thank you all for watching my video.